Chapter Twenty Four of Shaggy Man in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Shaggy Man in Oz by Jack Snow. Twink and Tom in Oz. The remainder of the day was given over to sightseeing for Twink Tom, the king of the fairy beavers, and the young beavers. Dorothy and the shaggy man loaded the party into the red wagon, which was drawn by the sawhorse, and conducted their guests on a tour of the beautiful city of emeralds and the nearby countryside. When they reached the gates of the emerald city, the shaggy man ordered the sawhorse to stop while he, with the aid of Ombi Ambi, a bright new nail and hammer, proudly restored the love magnet to its position over the entrance to the city. The company then drove out to call on Miss Cuttenclip and her famous village, whose inhabitants were artfully cut out of magic paper and moved about and talked like living people. Next they visited Professor Woollybug in his college, where the students learned their lessons by swallowing sugar-coated pills. On the return journey they met the scarecrow, who had been spending the day with a munchkin farmer for the purpose of being restuffed with fresh new straw, all except his head, of course which was filled with the marvelous brains the wizard had given him. Twink and Tom were delighted with this droll personage, who took an instant liking to them. That evening there was a great dinner in honor of Twink, Tom, and the king of the fairy beavers. Many of the most famous personages of Oz were there. Among these were the patchwork girl, the tin woodman who had traveled from his tin castle in the winky country for the occasion princess ozana the cowardly lion and the hungry tiger ojo button bright betsy bobbin trot captain bill the woozy and many many others it was a wonderful dinner and twink and tom were fascinated by all the curious and unusual personalities. The twins felt as if they were among old friends, since they had read so much about the famous people of Oz and their exciting adventures. On such occasion as this, it was always the custom of the wizard to put on a display of his magic. Tonight he did not. In fact, the little wizard seemed silent and worried throughout the dinner as the guests began to leave the table the wizard approached ozma unhappily i can't imagine what conjo did with my black bag of magic tools he said we should have questioned him before you sent him back to the isle of conjo ozma shook her head that would have done no good Conjo lost all memory of his former actions when he drank of the waters of the Fountain of Oblivion. The only others remaining around the table now were Dorothy, Shaggy, Twink, Tom, and the Beaver King. Did you look in the magic picture to see where Conjo might have hidden the black bag? Ozma asked. No, said the wizard. We were so excited and things happened so swiftly that we never thought of the magic picture. Then let us consult the picture immediately, said Ozma. The girl ruler rose and motioned to the rest to follow her as she made her way to the suite of rooms and the magic picture. End of chapter 24「Chapter Number Twenty Five of Shaggy Man in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. 
all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Shaggy Man in Oz by Jack Snow The Black Bag of Magic Tools Ozma swept the velvet drape from the magic picture. There was the familiar scene that appeared when the picture was not in use. A peaceful Oz countryside with rolling fields and hills and a large tree growing in the foreground show us the wizard's black bag of magic tools ozma said there was no change in the picture what can be wrong whispered dorothy soberly perhaps the magic picture can only show people and not things suggested the shaggy man i don't recall our ever having asked it to show an object before Ozma's face was puzzled. She was staring intently at the familiar picture. No, she said quietly. I think the magic picture is doing its best to show us the black bag right now. Everyone looked at Ozma in astonishment. There was nothing in the magic picture that looked anything like the black bag. It was merely the old familiar scene that the magic picture showed when it was not in use. Conjo was very clever in a way, said Ozma. He hid the black bag by means of his wizard powers in a place where few people would think to look. But he forgot that the magic picture is my own fairy creation, and I understand its magic better than anyone else. The little ruler paused, saying to those around her, watch this closely now she murmured a fairy charm so softly that none of the group could distinguish the words something was moving in the magic picture from behind the trunk of the tree that arose in the foreground of the picture slipped a small black object it grew larger and larger until it filled a quarter of the picture then it fell out of the picture frame to the floor it was the wizard's black bag of magic tools the little wizard leapt forward and gratefully seized his precious black bag so conjo hid it behind the tree in the magic picture he exclaimed End of chapter twenty five chapter number twenty six of shaggy man in oz this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Shaggy Man in Oz by Jack Snow. Twink and Tom Home Again. It is growing quite late, Ozma said turning to twink and tom and i am sure you children must be tired after the strenuous adventures of the day the little ruler paused and then added i know too that you're anxious to return home to your parents twink nodded yes your highness she said we have had a wonderful time in oz and we love you all very dearly but we must go home as soon as we can twink's right agreed tom we have had a great time and i wouldn't have missed it for anything but we belong at home in buffalo ozma smiled her most charming smile very well she said we will say good-bye now then dorothy and the shaggy man will show you to your room where beds are prepared for you while you sleep i will use the magic belt to transport you to your beds in your own home twink and tom bade good night and good-bye to ozma and the king of the fairy beavers the little animal had accepted ozma's invitation to be her guest as long as he felt he could be absent himself from his kingdom then dorothy and the shaggy man 
led twink and tom to one of the most beautiful sleeping rooms the children had ever seen the four talked together for a short time after which dorothy and shaggy said farewell and slipped quietly from the room it had been a long exciting day and twink and tom had no difficulty falling asleep although they knew that sometime during the night they would travel magically from the land of oz to their own beds in their home in far away buffalo and that was just what happened end of chapter twenty six end of shaggy man in oz by jack snow